When I set this pendulum into oscillation by letting it go like this, the frequency of the oscillation is called the natural frequency of the pendulum. I can also make it oscillate by pushing on it at regular intervals. And this is called forced oscillation or forced vibration. To build up a large amplitude, my pushing force has to have a frequency that closely match the natural frequency. It's like someone on a swing. If I give a push every time the person gets to this end, it will be easy for me to build up amplitude, which means energy. This is called resonance. The total mechanical energy of an oscillator is 1 half k times amplitude squared. So the larger the amplitude, the more the energy. If the frequencies do not match as well, it will be harder to build up amplitude and energy, which means that there will be less or no resonance. Of course, if I push with half the natural frequency, you know, a push every two swings. I can still build up amplitude and energy. Resonance can also happen between two oscillators. For example, I have two pendulums of the same length and I can set one of these into oscillation. The other one stays at rest. Because they have the same frequency, resonance will cause the second pendulum to swing. We can also look at this spring mass system. It actually has two modes of oscillation. Let's see. It has a pendulum mode and a spring mass mode. And in this particular case, because the two modes, they have very similar natural frequencies. So there is resonance between the two modes and energy shifts between the two modes. At one moment, you will have more spring mass system energy. And at another moment, you will have more energy in the pendulum mode. The energy shifts back and forth between these two modes. Okay, now let's look at the second pendulum. You see that it started to swing. Why do you think this happens? You may say that each time a pendulum bob moves past the other, it fans the air around it, causing the second one to begin to oscillate. You may also say that when one pendulum bob swings, it causes the rod up there to swing. The second pendulum is connected to the same rod, so it begins to swing. Because the rod shakes at the same frequency as the pendulum's natural frequency, it is easy for the second pendulum to build up energy. Here I have a rod with four pendulums of different lengths. I don't know which one you like the most, but my favorite is this one right here. So I'm going to concentrate all my energy on this pendulum. Please help me do the same. Let's see. Pretty good. This one's getting the largest amplitude, most energy. We're doing very well. Nice job. I know, some of you probably like the longest one instead. A lot of my students do. So this time, let's concentrate our energy on the longest one. Excellent. You're doing very well. Okay, how about let's try the smallest one now. Okay, the shortest one, focus your energy. Good 
jack. So, can you figure out what happened just now? Yes, it's resonance because these four pendulums have different lengths. So they all have different periods and different natural frequencies. If I want to make this pendulum oscillate with the largest amplitude, I just have to watch this uh, pendulum. So I know what its uh, natural frequency is. Uh, and then I just try to shake the rod at that same frequency. So this one is the one that builds up the largest amplitude. With resonance, even very slight shaking of the rod can cause large amplitude oscillation. At my website, there are links to videos of the infamous collapse of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge and some possible explanations. Also, there are videos on the breaking of wine glass by singing resonant frequency note to it.